there. We are on day two of the Creative Arts Collaboration event for August, and it is the hashtag PaGustArt, PaGustArt, and the theme is animals. And I want to kind of reiterate here how to search for these videos, just in case you didn't see my first one. I kind of went over it in my first one, but I'm always getting new viewers and new people. If you put in the hashtag, which is your pound sign, and then P-A-W-G-U-S-T-A-R-T, Pagust, that stands for PA. It's a combination of the words PA and August. PA, Gust, and then Art, Art. And then if you just do a search, a YouTube search on it, Look at all these videos that have come up. Look at all these. I still have a lot I need to watch yet. I've watched a lot. I feel like I've watched videos, animal videos all day. And look how many. Oh, look at this peacock by Angela Anderson. Oh, Angela, I need to go out there and watch that. That is just, just from your thumbnail. That's beautiful. Okay, so I just kind of wanted to review how to find those. Now, what I'm going to do today, oh, look where I'm at. I'm on stained glass. I had such fun doing yesterday's digital art that I thought I would do another one. I've already brought up my Art Weaver program, and I've already brought up a blank page. Again, I went out to Wiki Commons. I want to do a stained glass animal. I found this one. I'm going to use this stained glass image as inspiration. The file is The Life of Saint, oh my goodness, I can't even pronounce it. Ostermon, Ostermoin Isoroi, something like that. <laughs> anyway, he's a saint. <laughs> But I, that one just fascinates me. Now, this is more of a square, a circle within a square. And I'm using more of a rectangle here. So I may do the square within the rectangle and add some type of other decorative stained glass element off to e e either on either side or off to one side. That's what I'm planning right now. But just look at the colors in here. Look at the colors. The bright blue and the yellows and the tans of the lion. And I'm going, this is a saint, but I'm going to call him a shepherd for now. And in fact, that's what I'm going to use in mine. I'm going to use the shepherd. I also went out to Wiki Commons and looked for lions because this one has two lions down here. Looks like one with a big pretty mane on it and then maybe a female, a lioness. And I found this lion on Wiki Commons. And I brought him up here and I'm going to bring it in and alter it like I did that wolf in on yesterday's. And generally if you find them on a Wiki page, a Wikipedia page, these images generally are in the Wiki, Wiki Commons, but you always want to check. And I did that here for the one I want to use. I like this one. Now, I do not think that this is a lioness. Boy, it looks like it's been shot there, doesn't it? Or it's wounded right there. Maybe it got bit. I think this is another lion because it looks like he's got some mane on there. But I like, I like how he's walking. He's got that walking pose. I wanted a unicorn. And I couldn't find a unicorn, a real live unicorn. <laughs> I think they're mythological creatures. So I went out to the category of horses and I was hunting around for images of horses in here. And you can see there are a lot of images. I think I found one here that I like. Then I wanted a shepherd because over here we have a shepherd. So I went out to find a real life shepherd. And I do like this image right here at the top because there are sheep off in the background and I figured I could get some sheep so I brought that one up and oh look and he has a staff too so that's what I'm going to work on 
let's go back to my stained glass image here that I'm using for inspiration. I'm looking at this shape. It's a square and my canvas size is a rectangle. So I have measured off a square here in this light yellow color and then I filled it with a light blue on both sides. And I'm going to put a big circle inside of that. But if you look at this, look at this tiled art in there. So I created, and this is very much hand drawn and it's very much drawn on the spur of the moment, a shape that I'm going to tile in there. You'll see me tile in this shape and then I'll cover that up with the big circle and then put the animals and everything in there. It's a square with a circle with a circle with a circle <laughs> and then there's a black line this way and a black line this way and there are vertical and horizontal lines coming along the side. Now this is not going to be perfect but I'm having fun with it and that's the important thing. I already had started a part of this because I needed to make these little motifs and I built them and it was quite a tedious thing to build them in the graphic art. So I built them and now I'm just tiling them. Something like what you would tile um, graphics on your desktop. And I'm just making sure that center square is actually square. And because I opened up a new window and I'm going to place my final square on that new window. Here I'm just determining what color I want back there. I'm playing around with the colors, playing around with the sizes and the shapes. Now I copy two rows down and two rows down again. I'm not too concerned about any spaces in between because I know that there's going to be graphics that are going to be set over it. I'll have a big red, a big uh, circle over it. But I'm very happy with how it's turning out and I'm constantly going back and checking it against my inspiration photo. Here I put it on the new graphic. I'm just going out there and saving it at intermediate times, checking my graphic. Now you can see that I'll have these little tiled sections on each corner after I get my big circle in there. Also here I'm playing around with, I noticed that there were some white lines around the inspiration graphic so I'm just playing with putting lines in there. A lot of this is just getting used to the graphic program and how wide of a line you actually want. But I eventually get it and I section off my center square. So I'm very happy with what's happening now. Now I'm saying I'm going to work on the circle. Now the circle because I'm using the free version of the Art Weaver program, I have not found in here where you can build circles with just the outlines. And so I'm having to layer my circles. And it's not a perfect circle, but it's okay. It works in the end. I eventually take this circle out and replace it. Now I'm putting in the side squares and uh, I do some of this offline because I just need, it was pretty tedious doing all those little white circles all around the border there. It would have taken me hours to show it to you in real time. But I get one side done and then I copy it over to the other side. Now I realize that I have some space, extra space over on the right side of that circle. And I'm just kind of filling it in with some blue. 
here's where I'm rebuilding that circle. It's a pretty good practice. You just have to learn where to place your cursor down on the lower left. And I think I eventually started building it from the upper left. Now I'm finally ready to put my animals in. I start out with the lion. I'm checking and saying, yes, these are Creative Commons images. So I start out with this lion and I'm resizing him here, making him just a bit, a bit smaller, saying, yeah, that's probably about the size that I want. I'm very happy with it. Now here I just think that I'm going to, uh, did you see where it went black and white? I was playing around with doing what I did with the wolf, but that didn't really appeal to me, so I just decided to use the photographic images. Here I'm kind of doing a little lion dance between the two, figuring out the placement. I figure that I want the the big old lion in the front. Now I'm putting in the horses and I discover the horses are tiny. So what I'm doing is I'm cropping this image down. See I cropped it down and then I resized it. Built it up and then I cut it out again and that made the horses a larger size. You'll see that I eventually have to trim off some of those that horses back in so that he'll fit on the page. Now my shepherd's too small too, so I'm resizing that photograph to get a, a nice size for the shepherd and the sheep. And I'm pretty happy with that. Here I'm just resizing it and cutting it out. Put him in there. Take the horses and copy them and put them back in there. Here's where I redo the cut on those horses so they fit in the circle. Now I'm at the point to where I'm pretty happy with the placement. I'm going, now this is starting to be what I want. You see, I threw some trees in there and the, the swan and a chicken. <laughs> and now, because stained glass has a lot of leading around it, see all those black lines I'm putting in there? I'm drawing those, I'm outlining everything with thick, dark lines to simulate what a stained glass window might look like. There's a peacock there, and here I'm outlining the shepherd and the two lions. It's not quite where I want it, but when I start putting in these um, leaves and the stained glass elements, it starts to really come together. Here I'm putting in the the iron bars that they have on the the stained glass. It kind of sections it off. I call them iron bars. Here's where I'm putting in the leading. I'm just kind of drawing in the, the stained glass. Now it's really starting to come together for me. I'm really starting to like it. And at this point, I get out my little paint bucket and start filling it with different shades of the lighter colors. When you see that image flash like a light green every now and then, that's when I get my paint bucket on the wrong part of the graphic and it, it does a fill on the, the wrong part of the graphic and I have to undo it and redo it. <laughs> but that's the, that's the fun of doing the digital art. Now I'm just putting in the ground. I'm really starting to be happy with it now. It's, I really feel like I've drawn inspiration from it. Now I'm putting in some birds on the two side panels. Well, I thought I would, and then I, I, I thought, well, you know, that hummingbird goes right there in the center, and he's putting a flower on the shoulder of that shepherd. Or, he, <laughs> or he's getting nectar from the flower that the, uh, that's on the shoulder of the shepherd. And I have this little, I call him a blue bird. I forget the name of him, but I think he's a darling little bird. So he, he'll go on each of the side panels. Right there and there. Now I need some flying birds. 
then when you see those squares flash up on the screen I'm resizing my photograph one there and I decide that other bird needs to face the other way so I get out this white one and put it there and I realize that I put my one bird over the hummingbird in the center and I realize that at the end and I go in and I outline him and I have two birds in the center of this stained glass window. Now I'm working on the left panel outlining the swan. Extending those iron bars across the entire graphic. Those horizontal bars and I put in some vertical ones. I eventually go in and make those thicker and then I draw in some leaves for some flora and fauna and it really is taking on a stained glass appearance now i'm i'm starting to have fun with it i'm starting to say this is starting to work for me and i get out my paint brush my little bucket my little paint bucket the little graphic paint bucket and and uh, start filling in those glass panels with shades of greens and blues and then the red just is kind of still there in the background for an accent. Now I start to work on the right hand side doing the same thing. It really goes fast in, when you do <laughs> fast forward motion. It really took me a long time to do this. I had fun doing it though. I'm putting in the leaves here making it look like a stained glass panel. And I'll go back in and with the little paint bucket and start filling in the, the little glass panels with the blues and greens. Of course, again, when you see that green or blue flash, I, I filled it with paint on the wrong section of the graphic and I had to undo it and that makes that flash in in the fast forward. Now I'm just ending it up. I'm putting in thicker lines on those bars and I'm outlining it. I think that I'm done with this. I've certainly added enough color to it. I'm pretty happy with it. These are the big black lines. This was my inspiration photo here. I kind of like these leaves in here. I don't have any of those type of tree leaves in here. They're stylized tree leaves. But that's okay. Maybe on the next one. I have a little bird in here. He's kind of hiding like little birds do. And up here and then I have a bird flying here and a bird flying there, a swan and a rooster, two lions and two horses, some sheep. There's a bird flying in here. I should probably put a black line around that. I think I will. This was a really fun exercise to do, to go out and to build these shapes to build the tiles in here and then to go out and get the animals and build the stained glass around them. This was a really fun exercise to do. I have spent hours and hours on this, more hours than I intended to, so I am just very happy with the result here. I'm going to call this finished. Thank you for watching, and I will see you on the next page.